Let's say I'm building a chatting application and so far here's what I've got. A user can type in a message and when they click send, it submits an Ajax request to save it to the database and append it to the chat window. Now the issue is if there are two users chatting, it only updates the user that is posting the message. You can see the new message shows up here, but not in the original chat window. I have to hit reload here to see the new message. Now there are several solutions to this problem. One option is to pull for new messages as I demonstrated in episode 229. However, that adds some delay before they see the message and also greatly increases the number of requests coming into our application. Alternatively, we can use WebSockets and publish over that using something like Fay, as demonstrated in episode 260. However, in this episode, I want to show you a third technique, and that is using server sent events. This allows us to publish notifications over the simple HTTP protocol. Now, the way server sent events work is that on the client side, we can create a new event source and supply a path or URL, and it's going to maintain a persistent connection to the server. And we can also supply a callback function for it to trigger whenever it receives events from the server. So on the server side, it expects us to uh, return some data that looks like this, and that way it'll trigger the events, or we can also trigger specific events on the browser through this as well. Now, unfortunately, this isn't supported on all browsers, specifically Internet Explorer, but there are some polyfill options available, and I'll link to those in the show notes. Now, the tricky part of all of this, as far as Rails is concerned, is that we need to stream this event data from our server. And in previous versions of Rails, that was pretty difficult. However, in Rails 4, there's a new feature called Action Controller Live. There is an excellent blog post by the legendary Aaron Patterson where he goes over this new feature and shows how it can work with server sent events. I'll be going over the basics here, but you might want to check this out if you want further details. All right, let's get started in adding server sent events to this application to receive notifications when there's a new chat message. First of all, before we can use Action Controller Live, we need to set up our Rails application with Rails 4, which is currently unreleased. I've already done that here, and you can learn more about how to do this in episode 400. With this in place, we can go into any of our controllers, such as this messages controller, which handles the chat functionality, and include the Action Controller Live module, and this will allow us to stream responses. So now we can create a new controller action down here, let's call it events, which is designed to publish events to the browser. And we can write to the stream by calling response.stream.write and then writing any data we want to it. So for now, let's just do some tests and I'll do three times, looping over a number and then writing that number into the stream. And then let's um, do this with a sleep call for uh, how about a couple seconds. Now when you're done writing to a stream, it's important that you close it so that it doesn't stay open forever. And we can do that with response.stream.close. And in case there's an exception raised, it's a good idea to put this in an ensure clause. Now in order to try this out, we just need to add this to our routes file. So I'll do that really quickly here. Just add a collection route to our resources. And that's going to be a git for the events action. All right, now we can try this out uh, with curl to see if we're streaming any data. That's at messages slash events. And it doesn't look like we're getting anything back. And the reason is, is that we're using Webbrick, which is a default development server, which buffers the output. There you go. We saw that the response was displayed all instantly because it buffered it and then displayed it at the end of the connection. So we're going to have to switch servers to one that can stream responses and handle multiple connections asynchronously. And Puma is the one I'm going with here, but other options are Thin or Rainbows. So I'll just add gem Puma to the bottom of my gem file, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. And then we can start it up with the Rails server Puma command. So now when we run that curl command again, we get the response streaming to us live. So that works, but I wonder if we're able to support multiple connections at once. We can test this by repeating this curl command a couple times. By the way, I think that repeat command is specific to ZSH here. And it looks like this is only coming in one request at a time. Yep, it looks like we're sending or receiving the second request here. So it's not asynchronous. Now the issue is that threading isn't enabled by default in development. Uh, to enable it, you have to go to your development config file and set cache classes and also eager loading to true here. And with these settings, you're going to have to restart the Rails server every time you make a change to the application, which is just something you'll have to do if you're testing out threaded environments. Now if you want more information with multi-threading in Rails, check out episode 365. So I've restarted the Puma server, and let's try repeating this curl command again. And this time, they happen asynchronously. You see we're getting both streaming responses at the same time. 
With our streaming all working, let's update the client side so that it listens to new events at that path. We can do so by creating a new event source, then passing the path to it. And you might want to move this uh, path string off into an HTML uh, data attribute. So on this, we can say source.addEventListener and then pass in the event name we want to listen to. And if we supply a message, that'll be the default uh, event if no event name is specified. And we can pass in a callback function into here, which will be triggered whenever an event gets passed in. So let's just alert that event's data. So now back in the controller, we can customize this events action so that it responds in a way the browser expects. And first of all, we need to change our response headers so that the content type matches a text slash event stream. Now, whenever you're customizing headers on a streaming response like this, you always need to do it before you write or close the connection, because if we did it later on, we'd get an exception because headers need to be written to at the beginning of the response. Now, I believe this applies to these other controller actions as well. Even though they're not using streaming directly, they are including the action controller live behavior. So if you don't want it to act like this, you could move this events action into a separate controller where you include that module there. But it seems to work fine, including it for all these actions. Next, in order to trigger events in the browser, we need to uh, prefix the line with data colon and then end it with two uh, new line characters. And then it's also a good idea in here to rescue the IO error exception, which can occur if the uh, stream connection has been closed when you try to write to it. And I like to uh, log this as well. So maybe logger.info, let's say the stream has closed. And this might happen if the uh, client closes the connection. Now, after I restart my Rails application and reload this page, it's going to trigger an alert dialog every event that comes in from the server. Now, when all three come in, it's going to close the connection, but event source tries to keep the connection open, so it's going to reopen it and re-trigger the uh, events. So with this event system in place, we can use this to display the new messages as they come in. One way to do that is to pull the database for new messages. So we could say something like messages where the created at time is after a given starting time. And let's start that at time zone now. And for each of these messages, let's uh, return uh, write a response for the message and let's convert it to JSON in here. And then we'll need to reset the start time to be the messages uh, created at time. And then we can uh, do this, let's say just 10 times per request for now. It'll automatically reconnect. However, you'd probably wanna do this for a longer period of time. I just like using short times in development in case it gets a hanging connection. Now there's one more thing I need to do here in the controller and that is uh, Active Record will cache this query per request. So it's not going to uh, find the new records as are added during the connection. So to resolve this, we can call message.uncached and then pass in a block and any queries performed in there will not be cached. And then going to our copy script, when we uh, receive an event, we want to uh, parse the JSON data and then we can grab the message object off of this. And then we can append this to the chat. So that's with the chat ID and append this. And that's going to be the message name followed by the uh, message content. And actually this should have a list item inside of it as well. And let's uh, use text for that so that it escapes it properly. All right, let's try this out. I've restarted the Rails server and I have the two chat windows open. So if I send a message on here, then I see it in this other chat window as well. However, I see a duplicate message in this one, and that is because I'm uh, adding it in response to the Ajax request. And that's easy enough to fix. This uh, create action has this uh, JavaScript template which gets executed on the response, and we can just remove this line that appends that message to the chat window. Now another issue is that there is a noticeable delay from the point that we send the message to where it shows up in the window, and that's because we're doing some polling. So instead of doing database polling every couple seconds, it would be much better if we were somehow notified when new messages come in. And there are a variety of ways that we can do that. Now, if you're using Postgres for your database, you may want to consider using the notify and listen commands, which you can use to uh, send something across a channel to all listeners instantly. Another option is to use Redis, and that has its own pub sub features. And that's what I'll be using here. First, I'll add Redis to my gem file, and then I'll create a new initializer uh, called redis.rb. And then I'll set up a shared Redis connection here, and this will just connect to Redis running on my local machine, which I already have set up. 
And then going into my controller, whenever I create a new message, I can publish that over Redis. And let's call this messages.create. And then we just send the message data as JSON. And then when I'm listening to the events, I no longer need to pull the database. I can just call redis.subscribe. And actually, this is going to lock the connection, so we need to do this over a new Redis connection each time. There might be a more efficient way to do this, but I'm not sure. So let's subscribe to messages.create. And then for this, we can say when we receive that message, then that's going to return the event and the data. And when that arrives, I can call response stream write and then pass in that data straight into here. And then finally, you must ensure that we uh, close the uh, Redis connection by calling quit on it. Now let's try this out again. I've got my two chat windows open after I restarted the server when we hit send. And it looks like it shows up instantly on both chat windows. So that works. However, for some reason, is not clearing out my chat field. I'm not sure why. Well, after a little bit of research, I found it necessary in my create action to add the uh, text JavaScript content type as a response he header because for some reason, when I started publishing to Redis, it converted it to a text uh, HTML type. I'm not sure why publishing to Redis would change that, but for some reason it does. That's probably a bug. Now, while I'm here in the controller, I wanted to show you uh, something kind of cool you can do with this Redis setup. Uh, there's a p subscribe command, which stands for pattern uh, subscribe, and you can use an a glob operator here to match basically all the message related events and that way you can use p message to listen to uh, events this way and so with this setup what we could do is add the event into here and that way on the client side that will be the event that's triggered let's make sure to only use one uh, new line character there so that's going to be the event that we can listen to so we can listen to messages.create and trigger a create event behavior here on the client side, and we can easily add other events to the controller for updating or whatever else we might want to do with the messages and have them instantly reflected on the client side. So that's pretty cool. I like how Redis fits in with uh, server sent events. Well, I think our solution is pretty much complete here. Adding a new message instantly sends it to all the listening clients. Now for a minute, let's talk about how we might scale this for a production setup. If you're using Puma as your web server, it's going to default to a max number of threads of 16. So that means you can only have 16 persistent connections open at once, and that's going to be used up very quickly if you have long running connections like we do here. So you'll definitely wanna bump this number up or maybe try another server for this, such as Thin or Rainbows. Another thing to watch out for is the pool limit set in your database YAML file. This defaults to five, but you'll probably want to bump this up to however many threads you might want to accept per Rails instance. In my experience, Rails reserves a database connection for every request coming in, even if it's not triggering the database, so watch out for that. Now, managing long running requests like this events action is something that Rails hasn't done much of in the past. So there might be some optimizations which aren't in place when Rails 4 is released. So just keep an eye on maybe some memory issues that might be involved in this if you do do this. Overall, I think Action Controller Live has a lot of potential, but at the current state of Rails, I have a hard time recommending it over just moving long running requests off into a smaller process outside of Rails, such as Fay. I did run into quite a few gotchas trying to get this to work, and it does feel like a fragile solution to me. But keep in mind, I am running pre-release software, and hopefully my opinions of doing this kind of thing in Rails will change in the future. Either way, this was fun to experiment with, and I look forward to where it takes us. Well, that's all for this episode on Server Sent Events and Action Controller Live. Thanks for watching.